Hey Potterheads and welcome to another episode of Pottercast. This is episode 19 and as promised we're going to talk about the other international wizarding schools. So we start with the Beaubaton Academy of Magic. Okay, it's pronounced Bow Batten. And there we go. Thought to be situated somewhere in the Pyrenees. Visitors speak of breathtaking beauty of a chateau. Of the breathtaking chateau, surrounded by formal gardens and lawns. Created out of the mountainous landscape by magic. Beaubaton Academy has a preponderance of French students, though Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, Luxembourgians and Belgians also attend in large numbers. Both Beaubaton and Durmstrang have a larger studentship than Hogwarts. It is said that the stunning castle and grounds of this prestigious school were part funded by Alchemist Gold for Nicholas and Parnell Flamel met at Beaubaton in their youth and had a magnificent fountain in the middle of the school's park. Believed to have healing and beautifying properties is named for them. Beaubaton has always enjoyed a cordial relationship with Hogwarts, though there has been a healthy rivalry in international competitions such as the Triwizard Tournament, in which Beaubaton has 62 wins to Hogwarts 63. Apart from the Flamels, famous ex students of Beaubaton include Vincent Dudi. Trafel, Trafel, Trafel Piquet, who escaped the terror by casting a concealment charm on his neck and pretending that his head had already been cut off. Luc Melefoué, uh, the infamous pastry maker and muggle poisoner and Fleur Delacour, who fought in the world famous Battle of Hogwarts and was awarded medals for bravery from both the French and British ministries of magic. Their mistress, Olympe Maxime, is, in spite of her protestations and in contrary and to the contrary half giantess, brilliant, elegant, and undeniably awe-inspiring. Okay, Castella Bruxo. Pronounced Castel O Bru Shu. The Brazilian School for Magic, which takes students from all over South America, may be found hidden deep within the rainforest. The fabulous castle appears to be a ruin to the muggle eyes, to the few muggle eyes that have ever fallen upon it. A trick shared by Hogwarts opinion is divided on who got the idea from whom. Castella Bruxo, or Bruxo, is an imposing square edifice of golden rock, often compared to a temple. Both building and grounds are protected by Kaipura small and furry spirit beings who are extraordinarily 
but extraordinarily mischievous and tricky and who emerge under cover of night to watch over the students and the creatures who live in the forest. Former Castellabruccio headmistress Bendita Durado was once heard to laugh heartily on an exchange visit to Hogwarts when headmaster Armando Dippic complained of Peeves, the poltergeist. Her offer to send him to Kapura for the Forbidden Forest to show you what trouble really is was not accepted. Castella Brookshire students wear bright green robes and are especially advanced in both herbology and magizoology. The school offers very popular exchange programs for European students who wish to study the magical flora and fauna of South America. Castella Brookshire has produced a number of famous ex-students, including one of the world's most famous potioners, Lebatius Borage, author of, among other works, Advanced Potion Making, Asiatic Anti-Venoms, and Have Yourself a Fiesta in a Bottle, by Huao Kalau. Captain of the world-renowned Quidditch team, the Tarpoto Tree Skimmers. It was one of these trips that Bill Weasley's parents could not afford, causing his disappointed pen friend at Castella Bruxio to send him something nasty in the post. Okay, we now move on to the Durmstrang Institute. Or Durmstrang as it's pronounced. Durmstrang once had the darkest reputation of all 11 wizarding schools. Though it was never entirely merited, it is true that Durmstrang, which has turned out so many truly great witches and wizards, has twice in its history fallen under the stewardship of wizards of dubious allegiance. Dubious allegiance or nefarious intent is that has one infamous ex-pupil. The first of these unhappy men, Harafang Munta, took over the school shortly after the mysterious death of its founder, the great Bulgarian witch, Narida Volkanova. Munta established Durmstrang's reputation for duelling and all forms of martial magic which remain an impressive part of its curriculum today. The second dark period in Durmstrang's history came with the headmastership of Igor Karkroff, an ex-Death Eater, who fled his post upon the return from exile of Lord Voldemort. Fearing the latter's retribution, Karkaroff was an unprincipled and egotistical man who encouraged a culture of fear and intimidation among the students, and many parents withdrew their children from Durmstrang while he was in charge. The ex pupil who has done more than any other to cause damage to Durmstrang's reputation is Gellert Grindelwald one of the most dangerous wizards of the 20th century. However, in recent years, Durmstrang has undergone something of a renaissance. 
and has produced such international luminaries as international Quidditch star Victor Crumb. Although believed to be situated in the far north of Europe, Durmstrang is one of the most secretive of all schools about its whereabouts, so nobody can quite be quite certain. Visitors who must comply with memory charms to erase their knowledge of how they got there speak of vast sprawling grounds with many stunning views, not least of the great dark, the spectral ship that is moored on a mountain lake behind the school from which students dive in summertime. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. Now we've had a whole topic about this school, but just for a quick refresher, Elvermorny. That's right, the American Wizarding School. Now we're not gonna go through the whole story again, because there's so much of it. So, we'll now go to uh, Mahutakuro. It's pronounced Mahutakuro. This ancient Japanese school has the smallest student body of eleven of the eleven great wizarding schools and take students from the age of seven, although they do not board until they are eleven. While day students, wizarding children are flown back and forth from their homes every day on the backs of a flock of giant storm petrels, the ornate of the ornate and exquisite palace of Mahutakoro is made of mutton fat jade and stands on the topmost point of the uninhabited, or so muggles think, volcanic island of Minami Iwo Jima. Students are presented with enchanted robes when they arrive, which grow in size as they do, and which gradually change colour as the learning of the wearer increases, beginning a faint pink colour and becoming, if top grades are achieved in every magical subject, gold. If the robes turn white, this is an indication that a student has betrayed the Japanese wizard's code and adopted illegal practices, which in Europe we call dark magic, or broken the international statute of secrecy. The term white is a terrible disgrace, which results in instant expulsion from the school and trial of a Japanese ministry of magic. Mahutakaro's reputation rests not only on its impressive academic pa uh, prowess, but also on its outstanding reputation for Quidditch, which legend has it was introduced to Japan centuries ago by a band of foolhardy Hogwarts students who were blown off course during an attempt to circumnavigate the globe on wholly inadequate broomsticks, rescued by a party of wizarding staff from Mahotokoro, who had been observing the movements of the planets. They remained as guests long enough to teach their Japanese counterparts 
the rudiments of the game, a move they live to regret. Every number of the Japanese, every member of the Japanese Quidditch team, and the current Champions League winners. The Toyohashi Tengu att attributes their prowess to the grueling training that they were given at Mahot Mahotakaro Koro, where they practice over a sometimes turbulent sea in stormy conditions, forced to keep an eye out for not only the blodgers, but also the planes from the Mughal Air Base on a neighbouring island. Okay. Wagadu, and we just pronounce it the way it says to pronounce it here. Although Africa has a number of smaller wizarding schools for advice on locating these, see introductory paragraph. There is only one that has stood the test of time, at least a thousand years, and achieved an enviable international reputation. Wagadu. The largest of all wizarding schools, it welcomes students from all over the enormous continent. The address, the only address ever given is Mountains of the Moon. Visitors speak of a stunning edifice carved out of the mountainside and shrouded in mist so that it sometimes appears simply to float in mid-air. Much, some would say all, magic originated in Africa, and Wagadu graduates are especially well versed in astronomy, alchemy, and self-transfiguration. The wonders of European invention, and while African witches and wizards have adopted it, as a useful tool in the last century, many spells are cast simply by pointing the finger or through hand gestures. This gives Wagadu students a sturdy line of defense when accused of breaking the international statute of secrecy. I was only waving. I never meant his chin to fall off. At a recent international symposium, of animagi or animagi the wagadu school team attracted a lot of press when their exhibition of synchronized transforming caused a near riot many older and more experienced witches and wizards felt threatened by 14 year olds who could turn at will into elephants and cheetahs and a formal complaint was lodged with the International Confederation of Wizards by Adrian Tutley, Animagus Gerbil. The long list of celebrated ex-students produced by Wagadu includes Babahid, Akingbadi, who succeeded Albus Dumbledore as Supreme Mugwump of the International Confederation of Wizards. Students received notice that they obtained entrance at Wagadu from dream messengers sent by the headmaster or headmistress of the day. The dream messenger will appear to the children as they sleep and will leave a token, usually an inscribed stone, which is bound in the child's hand on waking. No other school employs this method of pupil selection. Okay. So that right there is information on a few of the other 
wizarding schools. Although there are 11 of these in total. And that's just some of them. And uh, the story of Ilvermorny is actually quite a long one, so that would be why I didn't want to go through it all. And that would be it for this episode. Join me for the next episode tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye. Excuse me.